You're watching EDFL Web TV from the Sporting Globe in Mooney Ponds. It's time to get into the wash-up and we start with Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division. Adam, it was a, a weekend where we had some uh, one-sided results, some close results as well, and the wind played a huge role. Let's start with the big one. Airport West getting over the line against Maribyrnong Park. It was almost like a cricket match. You bat first, you bat second, and uh, whoever had the wind got to do the scoring, and whoever had it second had to uh, chase the deficit. And Airport West twice came from more than five goals down. It still leaves them with a sniff of the top four. Their percentage is still no good. Uh, we spoke about Marby off the top, but are you convinced at all by Airport West Marcus Kenny also becoming the second player in Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division to break 50 goals for the season? Yeah, he kicked a three on Saturday. Uh, Harris got three as well. So some of the prime movers really stood up for Airport West, and this was a matter of simply uh, quality. That's uh, beat Maribyrn on Park in the end. We know Marby's obviously struggling a lot at the moment. Black got three goals, uh, four goals. Trent Lee got three as well. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, although they did blow a 31-point lead at three-quarter time, Maribyrn on Park, it, just a case of uh, too much uh, top-end talent uh, available for Airport West that won that game. Now, we spoke a lot about Avondale Heights and their trip to Section Road. Uh, as far as the, the scores would suggest, they didn't rely that much on Rose and Galea. In fact, it was Reese Megan and the midfielders that got the job done. Uh, can Megan win the medal this year, or does he have too many players trying to take votes off him there for the Reynolds medal at the end of the season. I know that Josh Grabowski has been a favourite of ours on web TV this season, but Megan's racking up the stats. He's had 40 possession games on a number of occasions this year. And now that he's adding goals, that really makes him a contender in theory. Uh, what about uh, perhaps the reality of battling that star-studded midfield and even some of those Avondale Heights key defenders and key forwards for the votes each week? Yeah, I dare say there's going to be a few teammates of his down at Avondale Heights that uh, might just uh, pip him at the post. At the We'll find out, I suppose. Uh, at uh, Reynolds Medal Nights, obviously a big night of year for the EDFL, and uh, it's going to be a very exciting count. I dare say that Avondale Heights will dominate that. But you're right, Tao, he's been great. And uh, on a day when Galea and Rose are quiet and only combined for four goals, two each on the day, uh, for making the match out with four of his own is a, is a pretty good effort in what was a pretty big game up at Section Road, a really important win for Avondale Heights. I know they're undefeated. I know they've won a lot of games this year, obviously, but this one in particular was uh, very, very impressive because Greenvale are on the rise and to get them to Section Road is a, is a big credit for the club. And some late uh, breaking news. Uh, the leader local footy account tweeting today that Adam McPhee is heading to the United States to sort out a personal matter. And Stephen Paxman, uh, the former Pasco Vale head coach and former Greenvale fullback, and of course a long time AFL player with Fitzroy and Port Adelaide, he is standing in to coach them this week, uh, potentially only this week. I haven't seen any further details, but uh, more unsettling for Greenvale because, of course, they've had players go to the World Cup and they've had a lot of injuries, and so I suppose that's the last thing they would have wanted. But we'll get into what that means when we go to the preview for Round 12. The other games in Premier were top four sides or top four contenders battling against teams in the bottom half of the table. Uh, Essendon do stars versus Aberfeldy. Not much to write home about here. McNamara kicked a bag of goals. Kyle Ream has got among the goals, which is important for him because uh, safe to say he let himself down last time against Avondale Heights and uh, he's, he's come a long way back from getting dropped to the twos after that game. And Avondale Heights is up next and he's finally got among the goals in Premier Division. So uh, a lot of time and money invested in Kyle Reamers and uh, just maybe he's starting to come good, especially with Lance Oswald still out of the team. They need running goal-kicking midfielders to uh, be pushing forward to assist in that forward 50. Yeah, a couple of cynics might say, oh, he did it against Essendon due to stars, but, you know, scrap that. They needed to win this game, Aberfeldy, and Kyle Reamers stood up. So, so good on him there, and... Uh, Obviously, he's got to back that up now in a big second half of the year for Aberfeldy because they're not guaranteed finals whatsoever and they're going to need some of their prime movers to stand up. But for Essendon, due to Stars, obviously, they've been very competitive this season, especially against some of the better teams. But after quarter time, they were sort of gone in this one tail. Uh, they were pretty disappointing after quarter time. Obviously, the wind can take hold in these games, but uh, weren't really seen after that. And... Uh, yeah, not, not a great result for them to go down by more than 50. And a tale of two one-sided games between Keylor and the Northern Saints and Strathmore against Pasco Vale. Neither match was as one-sided as the first time around, though, so it shows that the uh, relegation-threatened teams are fighting that bit harder and the top four teams had to work a little bit harder to win. The thing that stands out is both teams, the winners, had 12 different goal kickers on the weekend. So uh, obviously finding many different avenues to goal both sides. And Strathmore, one of the freest scoring teams in the league, not relying on Todd Grimer at all. They seem to have numerous avenues to goal. Keylor, 
a team that would probably like to have a spearhead kicking a big bag every week, but I certainly don't think they'll complain if they have 12 different guys hit the scoreboard for a major week in, week out. As far as Strathmore's concerned, Teo, they've lost two games this year, obviously to Avondale Heights, and the other game was Keelor on Good Friday. Keelor's first game back at Joe Brown Oval. Emotions were high that day, big occasion for the club. They are going just as well as Avondale Heights at the moment, Strathmore. Don't worry about that. They have been absolutely unbelievable. Only those two losses in the season. All the prime movers are, are travelling quite well at the moment. So everything is moving absolutely beautifully for Strathmore. So they are right up there. Don't worry about that. So no surprises there that they got a very significant win over Pasco Vale. Did what they had to do there. And uh, the other club, Keeler, obviously, yeah, they're going all right. Again, they get the tick for the win. Uh, good that it was a convincing win as well. Uh, you're right, Taya, 13 different goal kickers for Keelor on the day and uh, the usual suspects among the best players. So did what they had to do there, Keelor, and uh, they very much did look like a finals contender against a club that actually pushed them for some of the day. Northern Saints are OK. Uh, some of the reports from some of the pundits that were there at the game that uh, they actually played some pretty good footy, the Saints. So, yeah, good win for both those clubs. That's it for Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division. And we move on to Essendon for Division 1. Adam, uh, winners at the weekend. Uh, Tullamarine getting home by just a goal against Oak Park. West Coburg comfortably against Hadfield. As we discussed off the top, West Meadows coming from 23 points down at three-quarter time to overrun Craigieburn. And uh, a comeback from Glenroy falling agonisingly one point short. Not the result for the neutrals because it uh, opens up the gap even further between fourth and fifth. Which result jumps off the page at you as the uh, perhaps the big one in Division 1? And uh, I may steal your thunder here. It's got to be Oak Park. They were dangerously close to being left outright on the bottom of the table. A close loss themselves, so they've managed to push both the top teams. But uh, if Craigie Byrne had held on and got up against West Meadows, we'd be talking about Oak Park last in the division. And it's hard to believe given they've run the top pair as close as anyone has this season. Yeah, for, uh, aside for probably to blow out uh, West Coburg at, uh, at Hadfield, uh, three pretty interesting results on the weekends and three very close games. But for mine, the most important result was Taylor's Lakes over Glen Roy Taylor because there's now a, a three-win gap. Obviously, the buys uh, throw everything into chaos on the Division One ladder, but now it's... Uh, you know, all things being equal, each club's going to get the two buys at the end of the year. So we'll stick with the win-loss. And it is a three-game gap now between Glen Roy and uh, West Meadows. So the top four is probably locked in now. Obviously, there's a huge relegation battle to come in Division 1. So that's where the interest will be there. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, whether Taylor's Lakes and West Meadows can push the top two and who is the best out of the top two, that's where the interest there is. So even though the top four are locked in for Division 1, uh, still a lot to play out and plenty of talking points to come there. So How for mine, it was that, that game at Saw Reserve, Taylor. How important that Tullamarine got a wake-up call uh, against a, a team that's not going to make the finals? Because we'd been talking up uh, Tullamarine and West Coburg as being head and shoulders, run away clear of the rest of the division. Do you think this is what they needed, uh, just to be reminded that there'll be tough games out there? Or, or perhaps would they be worried that they got run so close by a team that nearly ended the day on the bottom of the ladder? No, good, good teams win, Teo, and that's exactly what they did, obviously, against Oak Park, who have been OK at stages so far this year, and uh, it shouldn't be a surprise, really, that Oak Park are at least being competitive against some of the better teams in the division. They were playing Premier Division footy last year, so... Tuller, they don't want to be too worried about that. They got what they got, what they needed. That was the win. Uh, there's still a game back anyway from West Coburg. It don't look like losing at the moment, so it's not like percentage is uh, a major factor right now. There's obviously a big clash coming up in a couple of weeks' time between West Meadows and Tuller and Marine. So oh, I won't we'll find keep, out a lot there. Won't keep anyone in suspense. We're heading out to Shaw Reserve. Uh, something extraordinary is going to have to happen in uh, Premier or in Division Two to uh, ensure that we don't uh, either take the van or the tent out to Shaw Reserve. We'll be there at West Coburg versus Tullamarine. It was only one point last time, and basically we need to see it again. <laughs> we want to see these two yeah. teams play. Yeah, it was only one point, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not convinced West Coburg are necessarily a better team on the day, Tao. So we'll find out a little bit more, and they will meet in September, obviously, and uh, it's a great little rivalry, that one, at the moment. It's a bit like a Hawthorne and Geelong, I think you mentioned on last week's show, Tao. It's a bit like that at the moment, and... Uh, yeah, we can't wait to see uh, round two of that particular battle. Just lastly, we spoke to Steve Kolonyuk at the weekend uh, on EDFL Preview. Hillside comes back from the bye. Uh, 
are they in relegation danger? This is a, a worrying stat. Since round eight, they've had 25% knocked off their percentage. They went from having one of the best in the league to now almost being within range of Craigie Byrne if uh, the Eagles were to win another game and Hillside keeps getting beaten badly. Now, admittedly, Division 1 works in a way where everyone plays uh, Tullamarine and West Coburg back-to-back, -back, and that's always going to do uh, a bit of damage to teams' percentage. Ironically, Oak Park is the only team that's come through it without uh, too much uh, trouble. So, uh, Hillside. Were you convinced by Steve Kolonyuk that uh, they are going to avoid relegation this year because it's very much at the forefront of his and the team's mind that the job is not done yet. They may have been flying early in the year, but three wins may not do it to keep them up. It's a one in five chance, Tao, and uh, when they're going, when a lot of their key players, I suppose, and a lot, they've, we know they've got some good youngsters, when they're all fit and firing on, on the same day and on the same page, they, get, they can get the job done hillside. So... They can get it right, but, gee, it's a tough month they've got coming up. I mean, they'd want to win two of these next following games, and it's going to be tough. They go to Taylor's Lakes this week, then they're hosting West Meadows, go to uh, Saw Reserve for Glen Roy, and then go to Craigie Burn. So three road trips in that uh, four-week block for them. For mine, two, two wins will be uh, will ensure safety, and uh, don't know if they can get two. They might be able to squeeze one in there. They might need another team to be having an off day, perhaps a West Meadows or perhaps even a Taylor's Lakes for them. They need to have an off day. They did obviously beat Taylor's Lakes early in the season hillside. So, yeah, I, I agree with uh, Stevie Collin. I think they'll be OK, just you know, pure weight of numbers. There's a few other clubs that are in a bit more danger at the moment. But, uh, yeah, boy, they don't want to be banking on those uh, three wins to keep them up there in the end. That's it for Essendon Ford Division 1. And we move on to Division 2 in the wash-up now. Adam, uh, winners at the weekend. Coburg Districts quite comfortably, even though they did lose a quarter to Burnside Heights. Jakarta, who we saw against Keelor Park. Roxburgh Park getting over the line after trailing at three-quarter time against Mooney Valley. And East Keelor doing enough against East Sunbury, who actually kicked quite an impressive score, given the uh, potential mismatch that was on the cards here between the two teams. Let's start with the match we were at. You can watch it for yourself or download it and watch it any time you like. Go to edfl.com. TV. The full match is up there. Two different files, first half and the second half. You can download it for yourself or stream it on the web browser at edfl.tv. We were out there. We saw 12 goals in the first quarter. We were thinking, how good's this? How good is Division 2 footy? Jakarta kicked nine first quarter goals. After that entertainment, the game really descended into a bit more of an arm wrestle and the scoreboard damage was done uh, because for the rest of the game, it was uh, a lot harder to find a goal out there at Keelor Park. Yeah, the Devils really struggled to find a lot of avenues up forward and as a result, uh, Jakarta decided to shut the game down once they uh, were able to establish that lead throughout the game and, and to be honest, uh, the last quarter was probably just playing out time really. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it was a pretty good start to the game obviously, Taya, very exciting and uh, you know, particularly Kilo Park though, they defied the conditions and kicked uh, a lot more goals than Jakarta did into the wind. So a surprise there that uh, in the end they got done by, uh, what was it in the end, 24 points. So it wasn't necessarily a blowout, but Jakarta was clearly the better team on the day. Keelor Park still have work to do if they want to be serious about, you know, A, making finals, and if they uh, do sneak in there, doing any damage at all. Uh, either they were missing some key players, though. Teo, uh, Luke Walsh and uh, Porco as well, both not playing. Uh, one and was injured uh, pre-game. Mon Ryan Monument missed as well. Yep. Missed, yeah, so... Yep, so, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, while she uh, did, a, did a hamstring or something uh, during training prior to the game, and Porco I uh, don't think is in the country at the moment. So they had, did have a few out Keelor Park, but gee, you kind of got some talent, don't they, Taylor? They play with a sort of brash sort of style of footy. It was a little bit Northern Saints-ish at times. It was a little bit tough, obviously, in those sort of conditions to really uh, play with a flowing sort of style. But at times, they really showed that there's some really good uh, ball users and distributors in that team. Ash Clooney had a very good game. Uh, also, Daniel Sacco, but our Sporting Globe Player of the Day, winning the $40 voucher, was Matthew Siciliano. Had an excellent match, uh, both using the ball and breaking the lines running. Uh, Matthew had to leave early after the game, so we don't have an interview with him. Uh, Matt, if you're wondering where your voucher is, go find Khan Sayers. He's got the $40 voucher to spend right here at the Sporting Globe, 690 Mount Alexander Road, in Mooney Ponds. Let's uh, check in with the uh, representatives of the club who came to speak to us after the match and we'll start with the Jakarta coach, Matt Sacco. At this stage, any belief is good belief for me and they're believing at the moment. So, you know, who knows, we're going to take one step at a time each game, you know, each week as it comes. And, you know, if we keep playing football like this, 
you know, we, we knocked off the Ace Keeler last week and, you know, they've lost one game. Who knows? You know, they can do anything. They're a good bunch of young kids. They're starting to listen and learn. And, look, we've got the talent there. You know, obviously, like any club, you've got your injuries. But, you know, they're working hard. And uh, I can't fault them at any stage of the last the commitment the last three weeks. It's been really good. Uh, we're pretty flat at the moment. Um, first quarter said it all. They kicked nine goals to three, and that set it up for the whole game for them. We had more scoring shots than for the whole game, but just in that last quarter, played into their hands, playing in the bottom corner here in the breeze. So We thought it was going to be a high-scoring shootout all day, and both teams would get a use of the win. So how come it, it, it closed down so much? Would you put it down to something Jakarta did, or was it more uh, execution yeah. from, from your boys? Every time uh, we, we were kicking with the breeze, Jakarta played this side of the club room, side of the ground, and played really well. We, we kept going along this side of the boundary line instead of trying to square the ball up into the centre of the ground using the centre corridor so we played straight into their hands which that's what they wanted just chipping around coming out the back line on the club room side. Keelor Park assistant coach there Andrew Bubb speaking to us after the match. So we move on from that match in Division 2 just a quick word on the other three games uh, Roxburgh Park down at three quarter time good comeback for them and Mooney Valley they get the cold comfort of knowing that they've run Roxburgh Park as close as anyone this season not once but twice and yet, at the end of this coming weekend, with the way the fixture works out, Jakarta has got Burnside Heights. So you suspect that they're still going to be two games shy of the top four. Hard to believe, given their percentage is probably going to receive a nice little boost as they take on East Sunbury as well. Yeah, obviously, like we've already discussed, they were quite good this weekend against Keelor Park. And uh, they will get that percentage booster against Burnside Heights. Although, might not be three figures, Teo. Uh, don't know how they went the first time around, but uh, well, it could be three figures, but maybe not a big margin. We've seen, we've seen Burnside Ice lose by as much as 150 points at some stages during the year. So, yet yeah, uh, there's other games though this week, Teo. Um, the top four all won their games, so really important there for the for the confidence, I suppose. Roxy did what they had to do against Muni Valley, low scoring affair. Mickelson only to two goals again. Not relying on your superstars week in, week out to get the job done on the scoreboard. That's really important. So uh, good effort for, for uh, Roxy there to get the job done without Mickelson kicking a bag of goals. Kobeck District's got that massive win against Burnside Heights, obviously. And East Keelor was an interesting one, one for me, Teo. I was expecting this one to be over 100 points, and it wasn't. Don't know whether it's, uh, it was a result of East Sunbury playing some really good football and pushing East Keelor, or there are genuine issues down there. At, uh, at the Cougars at the moment. Uh, they've been obviously very funny in the last month or so. It probably all started to unravel in the second half against Roxburgh Park, that EDFL match of the day that we did tail up there at Roxy. Uh, you know, some, uh, a couple of incidents off the ball kind of thing, and uh, they're really starting to look rattled East Keelor at the moment. So they want to get it right in the second half of the year. They've been good enough to hold on to second spot and still two games clear. So... Still in for a top two finish, but for mine right now, I'm not convinced about East Kilo whatsoever. That's it for the wash-up. Stay with us on EDFL Web TV as we look ahead to round 12, and we're coming to you from the Sporting Globe, 690 Mount Alexander Road in Mooney Ponds.